In the past, only people diagnosed with celiac disease or gluten intolerance adopted a gluten-free lifestyle. Although gluten-free is the key treatment of celiac patients, people are flocking to this dietary change for a variety of reasons. A significant number of autoimmune diseases, for example, arthritis, lupus, celiac, and cancer, are food-induced. This discovery, which has been known since the 1970s, verifies the fact that certain foods can trigger an autoimmune process whereby the immune system begins to attack itself. In this scenario, gluten is a major culprit food for many people, not just celiac sufferers. Today, one can hardly investigate health topics without discovering gluten-free recommendations as the solution. So what exactly is gluten? Gluten is a protein that occurs naturally in grains such as wheat. It's in many foods, but especially bread. Gluten gives bread its structure, makes it rise, and gives it a chewy texture. Gluten is also a binder that keeps the other ingredients together. It's no coincidence that when you take the T and N out of gluten, you're left with glue. There are four gluten-related designations. Gluten allergy denotes an allergy to gluten and produces a typical allergic response. Gluten intolerance is the inability to digest gluten. Gluten sensitivity is a combination of allergy and intolerance. Celiac is an autoimmune disease produced from the damage created by gluten. In gluten sensitive individuals, gluten creates a perfect storm set of conditions leading to intestinal flora imbalance, leaky gut, and eventually a myriad of vitamin and mineral deficiencies if not corrected. Hence, gluten is ultimately responsible for many more diseases than celiac. For example, there are 20 types of cancer associated with vitamin D deficiency. The two most common deficiencies seen in gluten-sensitive individuals are vitamin B12 and iron. Now, you also may have the genes for gluten sensitivity, but this doesn't have to mean you are or will become ill. Genetic predisposition does not automatically doom you since genes can be turned on and off. What having the gene for gluten sensitivity may mean for you is if you continue to eat that which you are sensitive to, you will more than likely eventually become ill. Environment plays a bigger role than genetics. It's the choices you make that determine your health. According to the Gluten-Free Society, what some people and doctors may not fully understand is gluten is only one of the thousands of proteins found in wheat, barley, rye, etc and is found in all grains. This discovery warrants serious investigation, especially if you've gone gluten-free and still feel sick. For example, corn gluten may be just as devastating to your digestion as wheat gluten, even though corn is a popular commercial replacement for gluten-sensitive individuals. You may need to experiment with grains other than wheat, barley, and rye to determine if you are sensitive to these. A rotation diet is excellent for this purpose. According to Natural News, the gentlest way to figure out if you are sensitive to gluten is diet therapy. Avoid gluten for several weeks, then reintroduce it and observe any reactions. Most of the following commercial products contain gluten. Bread, cereals, spreads, biscuits, cakes, chocolate, lollipops, soda, crackers, pre-made meals, frozen meals, pies. Actually, this list could reach Antarctica. 
on the shelves at the supermarket, soups, salad dressing, pasta sauces, and most, if not all, processed foods usually contain gluten. And the amount of gluten in our food is increasing. According to Dr. David Brownstein, the author of The Guide to a Gluten-Free Diet, Genetically modified crops have increased the amount of gluten in our diets by as much as 50% more than it was just 20 years ago. Regarding digestion, if you don't tolerate gluten well, your body is not able to absorb the nutrients in the food you are eating. Physiologically, this non-absorption problem is due to the flattening of the villi lining the small intestine. This is the particular damage to the body caused by gluten. So now that we know gluten is in every grain on the planet, is it enough for gluten sensitives to stop eating wheat only? This depends on the individual. Although there are many wonderful substitutes for wheat on the supermarket shelves claiming to be gluten-free, perhaps it is the gluten in corn or rice that one is sensitive to. These might need to be avoided in addition to wheat gluten. Each individual is different with regards to grain sensitivity. Completely avoiding grains is difficult and probably not practical but there is still a lot you can do to reduce your grain intake. Try replacing at least some of your grains with an increased consumption of protein and vegetables, especially fresh vegetables. Depending on your blood type, meat and fish may be the most appropriate source of protein. For others, vegetarian-based proteins such as beans and pulses are preferable. Maintaining a constant source of fresh fruit in your diet is also very important. When you do consume grain products, avoid processed food completely. Whole grains are better than processed grains, for example, flour. Anyone on a gluten-free diet will have become aware of just how much the standard diet relies on flour and other wheat, barley, and rye derivatives. So you've made the decision to go gluten-free, maybe prompted by a serious disease or illness such as celiac, Crohn's, IBS, etc or by the need to handle complex behavioral issues such as ADD or ADHD. You now face a dilemma, especially if you prepare food for others. The so-called gluten-free substitutes don't have the same taste or texture. There is nothing wrong with them, and you may even like them better, but the difference will be noticed if you make the substitutions overnight. Rather than overnight conversion, don't clean out the pantry just yet. Think in terms of transition. Transitioning will ensure the least amount of emotional upset. After all, the way we process information about our food is complex and mirrors the way we process emotions. If you have chosen to make the gluten-free conversion, you want it to work. Understand and acknowledge that gluten-free products will vary in taste and texture. Introduce one gluten-free substitute at a time, at times when you know a pleasurable experience can be achieved. Take frequent vacations, one to three days, from the gluten foods in your old diet without any gluten-free substitutes. Encourage others to be in on the selection, read labels, try various brands, look up recipes and meal preparation. For at least two weeks, plan substitutions based on small portions of your meal, not the centerpiece. When integrating your food in this way, the brain will place less focus on the new and the transition will be far easier. 
please click on the link in the description box below to receive the free 20-page gluten report, The Big Gluten Secret. My name is Valerie Robitaille and I'm a certified nutritionist and health educator. Please join me and fitness practitioner Angela Sanchez for a journey into our gluten-free lifestyle. Free webinar, The Big Gluten Secret, Tuesday, September 15th at 8 p.m. EST. Links below.